Hello all, so we've got another video for you today. We are going to be doing a video with our Garden Daisy stamp set. Uh, so let's flip over and have a quick look. So um, we are going to be using a couple of different tools as well today. So we've got the Make Art Station, which is an absolute godsend. I absolutely love it. Uh, so we finally got these back in stock again. I apologise for the um, glare in parts of this. We have skylights above us and there's nothing I can do to stop the glare, unfortunately. Um, and then we're also going to be using a scoreboard. Um, so this one is the, the um, f is it's not exactly the same as the one I have. I have one that is no longer made, but this is it is exactly the same. It's just got a different name on it. So this one we sell it in inches because all of my cards are done in inches, and it, obviously this one has the um, inch and the quarter inch and the half inch and the three quarter inch marked on there as well which makes it a whole lot easier for you and it also comes with an envelope scorer on the back as well so the main products we're using today we've got garden daisy which again i'll show you a little closer in a moment um we're well, going to use the tartan stencil we're using crystal clear embossing powder we're using white cardstock our super smooth cardstock and our black jet black cardstock we are using our large blending brush, our sticky glue, which comes in the two sizes. We've got 120 mil, finally back in stock, and 30 mil. We're using clean color pens in yellow and sugar diamond pink, and the Versa, Mar oh, sorry, Versa Fine uh, black ink, Onyx black. So they are our products. So let's have a closer look at our stamps and stencils. So, this is the Garden Daisy stamp. Oh, let's get that glare off the thing. Oh, there we go. It's one of our 899 sets. Um, and obviously you get the butterflies attached to the stamp as well. But if you don't want the butterfly on there, you can always mask it off. Um, fabulous stamp, can use it for so many different occasions. And then our uh, tartan stencil, which is roughly an, A7, uh, sorry, an A5 size. And I'm going to show you how you can make it stretch over to an 8x8 card. As I said, Clip Kitsch Flamingo ink, Versafine Onyx Black, our large blending brush, but whatever blending brushes you've got should probably work fine. I just find the larger ones are a little bit easier to do the larger spaces. Um, and our sticky glue and crystal clear embossing powder. So let's move all of this out of the way and we can get started. There are a few bits and pieces um, in this particular uh, few bits and pieces as in cardstock in this particular card. So there's quite a lot of pieces to go through. So I'll do that for you first off. First of all, you are going to have an 8x8 card and it's going to be scored at... Let me grab my scoring board so I can explain this to you have already scored it so we can show you as we go along so when I say to you score it at I mean those actual numbers not adding on so we're scoring at half an inch we're then scoring at two and a half inches so it's half an inch two and a half inches it's not half an inch and then add two and a half inches so you'd be scoring at three you're scoring at two and a half inches you're also scoring at six inches. So when we put it all together, it will fold around like so. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's an eight by eight card. Our eight by eight are slightly smaller than an eight by eight. They're designed to go through an eight by eight envelope. So be aware of that, which is why some of our um, measurements can be a bit odd, sixteenths and fifth and eighths and things like that. We also need another piece of heavyweight cardstock. Um, this one is, oh, I think it's about 350 GSM, might be 300. But again, about the same sort of weight as your card, actual card base is, would be ideal. Now this piece is eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. Hopefully that makes sense, eight and a quarter and five by three quarters. Now. On this particular card, you are scoring at five and three quarters 
and at seven and three quarters, which will leave you a half inch on the end here. Hoping that's made sense to you all. Then we are gonna go in for all our little layers and bits and pieces. So first off, you are gonna have a backing piece, which is a black piece, seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches, and a white top piece, which is seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. You are also going to have one piece, which the black is five and a half by five and a half, and a white of five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Then you have two pieces, here we go, here we go. Black is one and five eighths. I know you hate me. Um, so you've got two pieces at one and five eighths by seven and a half in length. Then you've got two white pieces at, uh, where I, I've lost where we are, at one and three eighths by seven and a quarter, I'm sorry. Horrendous, I know, but it'll be worth it in the end. Then you have one piece of black cardstock at ooh, da, 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 where are we? three inches by seven and a half inches, and then a white layer for that one, which is two and three quarter inches by seven and a quarter inches. Hopefully, you're all pausing me and writing this down. And then finally, the last piece you've got here is one and three quarter inches by five and a half inches and the white is one and a half by five and four sixteenths two eighths i don't know why i wrote four sixteenths that doesn't make sense does it but obviously there's a reason so that's all the pieces you need as i said there are a few pieces to this but um don't panic mr mannering if you need some help just email us and you can email us at honeydewcrafts at gmail.com. So as I said, this is what I call my top piece. And my top piece I've scored at five and three quarters and at seven and three quarters. And then that will fold to look like so. So you've got a little flap here. Now I've already put my red tape on here. I would recommend a really strong adhesive for this next task that we're doing. Um, and the, I do find that the red liner tape works really well for this. But if you have a preferred um, glue or whatever, that's your choice. And then again, with this one, now I do do it this way, which makes the half inch really a pain in the butt to get to, but it's worth it in the end. You're scoring at half an inch, two and a half inches, and six inches. Okay. And that will fold round to give you your rectangle shape in there or thereabouts it doesn't have to be perfect so let's pop these pieces out of the way and get started i have again put lots of this together already just to save us some time um, while we're working through this particular project because again you don't want a five hour demo video of me so I'm just going to show you a few of the little tricks that you need to know um, when you're doing this particular card so we're going to start with our tartan stencil now I try you know you those of you that have watched me before know I'm a bit OCD on certain things I think Martin wishes I was when it came to the ironing as well but I'm not um, <laughs> So I try and get this squared first, and then I bring my tartan stencil in, and try and get that with roughly the same top and bottom as well. And I'm gonna be right on the edge here. So my cardstock is actually past the white edge around there. And I'm just hearing that our neighbors have just come in through the, their door and they are joiners. And they are probably going to turn their machine on, which will be fabulous. A bit of entertainment for us. So hopefully we'll get through this before they get started on that. So we've got the blending brush, the large blending brush. I'm just going to load some ink onto there. And I'm going to blend my tartan stencil with the ink. Now the beauty about this, 
particular board is you can move your magnets around. They're super, super strong. So you don't have to worry about things moving as you're going along. And you can then pop it straight back where it came from. Now, we are gonna try and make this stencil stretch across our design. So one little tip when you're doing that, try not to go in a straight line along the edge that you want to line over, you want to match up again, and don't go too heavy along that edge. So we'll just get this color down on here, and then I'll show you the next stage. Remember what I said, don't go too heavy along the edge, and don't go right up to the edge. So we're going to remove our stencil. And you can see, here we go, I can hear the machines going already. Isn't that just fabulous? So there we go, we're going to try and line it up as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just do it as best you can. stencil back on there so as you can see I've done as let's see if I can bring this up to the camera because if I try and bring this into focus for you guys it goes all haywire so you can see that my stencil is now over what I've already done and I've lined up as best I can with the stencil on top of the bit that I've partly already already put the ink on to that's our guideline I can just see that that's moved a little And if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. If anybody tells you otherwise, they won't get another handmade card from you in future. So we're just going to then go in, load our brush up with ink and stencil that through. Nice and quick and easy. Now obviously this piece is the only piece you need to do that with. The other pieces are fairly self-explanatory as far as stenciling them goes I think if you've stenciled before if not then what you've just seen me do here you're going to do exactly the same on all the other pieces um, except you're not going to have to line it up so I'm hoping we are roughly not bad so let's bring that up so that you can see what I mean so you can't really see where that join was so long as you're careful when you go to this side of it when you've inked this don't go too heavy down there and don't go right up to the edge. It will hopefully be a perfect match. So I'll just pop that. Well, I don't need to put that away yet. So I'm going to pop that to one side. I am not going to show you me gluing it all together. I have got one that I did previously. And all I've done is glue that onto the black cardstock. As I say all the time, we work. I put try and put things together as I'm going along so I don't have to keep trying to find the pieces I've lost so we're just going to stick this down on the card and then pop that to one side Now we're going to do the small square, which again is going to have the tartan stencil on it, but here's the but. You do not want to add more ink to your blending brush. Work with the one you've got. You just want it to be really, really light on here, but you want to tie all your cards together, so you want that extra touch on there but you're going to be stamping on the top of this and then coloring it in some form on top of that um, so unless you are prepared to stamp first and then mask everything out which I'm not you'll then have to try and find a way to hide that ink that's come through when you color it in so really light touch with that you can hardly really see it on the kit on there probably slightly heavier than I would normally go so there we go and say not 
adding any extra ink into that that um, blending brush. Do not stick that together. I know I always say stick, 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 stick. Don't do that piece until the end because we're going to stamp on that. But what I would suggest you did is stencil everything all at once and then I have done, I've already done that and I've stuck my black cardstock to the back of it. And then I'm just going to show you how all this pieces together. So I always start with my middle piece, which is this panel, if that makes sense. So it's your top panel. And I'm going to glue that down. So much for being a quick quick demo. We're at 15, nearly 16 minutes already again. Good grief, I obviously waffle far too much. So I'll we'll stick that one down. Then I'm going to stick my two panels down on the sides. And the reason I do the middle is because that allows me to judge roughly where these two panels are going to go. So that we can try and keep all the heights top and bottom together. So we try and keep these lined up and the bottom lined up. Same again. So that's our four panels put together. And then the smaller panel just goes on the edge here. Of what I call my top card. Did you all see that move as I did that? I'm going to pop those all to one side. So all those millions of pieces that you had, like this, are now two pieces. Oh, right, I lied, four pieces, because you've still got these two. Pop those your card pieces to one side and your black layer to one side. We're just going to be working on this. You won't need your board now either. isn't charging and that is not a good move so we're now going to be working on this with our stamp I should have mentioned we also need a heat tool as well we're going to take the VersaFine ink as you can see my stamp is very very well loved lots and lots and lots of ink on here ink is still a bit dry it's still a bit wet for when I put that on we're going to be adding embossing powder so I'm just going to put a little bit of my anti-static bag on there as well that will help the embossing powder not stick to where that ink might still be wet and then we're going to pop our garden daisy stamp in the middle or as near as damn it to the middle as you can Now, wherever the more solid dark pieces are, I always just give them that extra little push just to make sure. There we go. And then we're going to take our crystal clear embossing powder when I find it. this one and we're going to sprinkle that over the top light little tap remember with when you're using the embossing powder with the versafine you do not want to give it the usual hard flick that you would to take the excess off hence I did use that 
anti-static bag. So we're going to heat this and we're going to heat it from underneath. Make sure you get your heat gun warm first or hot first and be careful because it can get very hot if you're going to do this from underneath. If you're not used to it, just be a little bit cautious of that. So bear with me a second. And now that the sun's coming out, so we're going to get shadows on the screen. I apologise. I'll try and work around them. daisies stamped and embossed onto our image and this is what I mean by when I said stamp re as light as you can because in here you can see that pink coming through on the petals so unless you wanted to go in and cut and mask this all off completely which I think there's more I can do better with my time than doing that um, I would recommend going quite light so we're just going to go in with, this is our sugar diamond pink, and we're just going to colour all of the, the flowers in. Now I've done this on super smooth cardstock because I'm not actually using the blender to or any other colour to blend it. I actually want this to be the true colour of the pen that I'm using. But if you want to use watercolour or whatever colour cardstock you want, you can, it's your card, you do what you want to do with it. Um, I'll just do a couple of these. You don't want to watch me colour this whole thing in. I do already have one I did earlier. But the one thing I will say is if you are using the clean colour pens and it, the colour does show through if you've gone for a light colour and your stenciled colour does show through, don't keep going back over the same thing while the ink's wet. Wait till that pen's dried a little bit and then go back in and you'll lay more colour down. You may not cover it completely uh, but it will help but if you keep scrubbing over it if it's not watercolour cardstock it will um, start to tear your card which you don't want to do the nice thing about it having been embossed is you can kind of scribble over everywhere and it just blends in again remember that you have embossed this so the ink that you're putting down with your pen at the moment will all sit on the top of wherever that embossing is Somebody obviously, I don't know if you can hear that in the background, somebody's decided that they're going to take their motorbike out to play very loudly. So we are almost done. I said I wasn't going to do them all, didn't I? Got carried away. They're not coloured beautifully. But I'm leaving the middle one here white, because, well, it's not white, because I want to make it that one yellow just to make it pop. This is actually a very similar card to what we taught on one of our workshops this year. So if anybody's interested in workshops, we are fully booked at the moment, but there will be more coming out. So that's, oh, and your butterfly, don't forget, she needs some colour as well. Don't forget to go in and blot all of that, because it will smudge if you don't. And there's nothing worse when you've spent all that time putting your card together and then it all smudges. So just pick up any excess and you are then going to end up with something that looks like so. Now if you want, and I have done here, I've just stamped it out again and cut the daisy and just cut the yellow daisy out and I'm just going to curl the petals really slightly just to add a little bit of movement to the card and I'm just going to stick that over the top and that's a great way if it does if you do do something wrong of hiding something underneath. So I've only done that with that one, just with the one daisy. You can see a little bit of texture dimension, a really little bit. But So you can see what I mean by just adding something 
just to make that one in the middle pop a little bit more. But do not stick your this piece onto your black piece until you've heat embossed it. A few of our ladies on the workshop learnt that the hard way. So I'm going to stick that piece down. You can, if it does happen, it happens. It's just going to take you a little bit longer to emboss your um, image because it takes longer for the cardstock to heat up, and um, also <coughs> it may um, make your card curl a little bit more than it would normally do because you're going to have to apply more heat to it. If that is the case, then I would recommend you mount it onto here with foam pads. Just makes your life a little bit easier. So you're mounting this onto your card with this piece that you've scored to your right. Like so. So now we're going to tape this all together. Please, ladies and gentlemen, when you do this, be nice to yourself don't go the full whack so you're going to fold this over like so so you've got your this flappy half inch piece stays out flat you've got the first school line folded flat and then you are going to fold it on the card fold not on this fold on the card fold and stick it down Remember your tape is along the middle here, it's not at the top here. That's where you want it to stick. And you're gonna pull that piece out. And hopefully it will give you something that's roughly rectangle and it will fold down flat. If you don't leave that piece there or if you fold it from there, it won't fold in flat. So please, please, please leave your quarter, your half inch piece flat. You're gonna fold here and then fold it flat against its eight by eight original card fold. And it will do such. This piece, you're gonna do the same thing. You're going to fold, leave this piece out, which is your half inch scored line fold it back on itself on your other score line then depending where you want it positioned you're going to take your card you've got that folded you see it's still folded flat you are going to line it up with the edge of your card not with the black not here not further down right at the edge of your card now this is where you may find that your taped section is going to stick here. So you might have to fiddle a little bit to make sure it doesn't stick on your folded piece. Like mine just is about to. There we go. Have we still got that tape? Ah, tape moved. we were holding it up in the air look so we're going to position it right on the edge of that card and push it down again remember your tape is it through the middle it's not on the edge here should roughly be. So while it's all folded down flat, you're going to pop a little bit of glue on this outside third. You don't want to go way too much. Just on the outside third, fold that over and stick that down. And hopefully it'll end up with a fabulous card that looks like so. Stands up on its own. You can pop your message on the back or you can pop a little message down the side, underneath. Position this somewhere else and you wouldn't have to do that. But I would recommend probably I'd write on the back of mine if this was for my 
card to give away. Uh, the one we did on the workshop was actually using our brick wall stencil. So this is the ones we did on the workshops. Put my petals up so you can see it done with the brick wall stencil as well. Again, really, really effective. And again, it stands up as required. So let's have a quick look back at what we've used, shall we? So we had our Easy Score scoring board and our Make Art Station, the magnetic board. We also had the cardstock, super smooth cardstock. We do it in 250 GSM or 300 GSM, it doesn't matter which for this particular project, and the jet black cardstock. We had our tartan stencil. We had garden daisies. We had Versafine Onyx Black. We used yellow and sugared almond pink clean color pens. We used crystal clear embossing powder. Our large blending brush and our sticky glue which comes in the two sizes. So we've got loads and loads of different cards that have been made with this particular set of stamps. So this again is our garden daisies and in the centre of this one, um, let me find, here we go, sorry. sorry about that, I wanted to just grab this to show you. The centre of this flower has been coloured, or the little bit of colour that you see on there, it's not necessarily in the centre of the flower, um, has been coloured using using um it's our centerpiece stamp set so it's one of our 12 a 13.99 stamp sets and it has a tiny little piece two little sections here little stamps which make great detailed stamps just to add a little bit of texture to something uh there we go again another one uh done with the garden daisy and then just the butterflies being pulled out in pink on this one and then the garden daisy has been used in the background as well this one I love. Just being coloured with pencils and that one flower left red. Another one done with the brick walls, a slightly different type of card. Uh, similar, it's got a little bit lifted in the front which folds down flat to go in an envelope. Another beautiful one. And on the background of this one is our, I think it's our, uh, let's have a look secret garden stencil in the background on this one and then last but not least another one with the secret garden stencil in the background and the sentiment on this one is from our say hello stamp set so i think sorry you got my whole finger in there then i think that's everything i hope you enjoyed it I have another quick look at our finished card oh, wrong way. there we go so that's the finished card and i think i've Anybody would be chuffed to receive that in the post. It folds down flat to go in an 8x8 envelope, which is ideal for popping in the post. Um, if anybody's got any questions, you can email us at honeydewcrafts at gmail.com. You can follow us on our Facebook page, where all of our new launches and products are um, released, as well as our um, closed group, which is where called the Honeydew Crafts Be Inspired Facebook page. And that's where all of our lovely customers and friends and family all post pictures of stuff that they've done. Look at that, look, the sun's put a shadow right across my face. Oh, well, you know what it means. <laughs> Time to finish up, I guess. So um, you can go on there and uh, post all your pictures and show, everybody goes on there and shows everything they've been doing with Honeydew Crafts products, which is lovely to see that everyone's actually using them and not just collecting them. Um, and then we have our YouTube channel, which is where you'll find, you're probably finding this video. If you go on there, make sure you like and subscribe to us. Um, again, because you'll get notifications of all the new videos uploaded on there for you. As I say, anybody got any questions, please feel free to email us or message us via our Facebook page. Have a lovely day. See you soon. Bye.